So there's definitely a lot of opinions out there about how effective an N95 respirator is versus a surgical mask at preventing the wearer from getting infected with a contagious virus. So today we're gonna take a look at a four year long study that followed 2,862 medical workers working at 137 different medical centers during peak flu season. And they gave half the staff N95 respirators and the other half surgical masks to wear at work to determine if either of them was even effective at preventing these workers from contracting the flu, and if so, which one was most effective. And I think you're gonna be just as surprised by the results as I was. But first, let's take a look at what the differences are between an N95 respirator and a surgical mask. So according to the CDC, a respirator is a personal protective device that is worn on the face or head and covers at least the nose and mouth. A respirator is used to reduce the wearer's risk of inhaling hazardous airborne particles. An N95 FFR is a type of respirator which removes particles from the air that are breathed through it. These respirators filter out at least 95% of very small 0.3 micron particles. And on the same page they say surgical masks are loose fitting and provide only barrier protection against droplets including large respiratory particles. Most face masks do not effectively filter small particles from the air and do not prevent leakage around the edge of the mask when the user inhales. So an N95 respirator is designed to create a tight seal for the user so that most of the air does get filtered through the respirator and it can filter out up to 0.3 microns, which is small enough to capture most viruses. Now surgical masks were actually designed to prevent the wearer from contaminating the surrounding area when they cough, sneeze, breathe, or even talk. They do not filter out small particles like the N95 respirator does, and they do not create an airtight seal. This is what's known as leakage, where air can come in from the top and around the sides of the mask and just bypass the mask altogether. So if we go back to that four year long study, you would expect to find that the N95 respirator is significantly more effective at preventing the wearer from contracting the flu but that's not actually what they found. So this study is published in July of 2019 and it's titled N95 Respirators versus Medical Masks for Preventing Influenza Among Healthcare Personnel, a Randomized Clinical Trial. And what they found was out of the 2,862 participants, 207 medical workers who wore the N95 respirators to work and 193 medical workers who instead wore the medical mask did contract influenza. So that's 8.2% in the N95 group contracted it and 7.2% in the medical mask group contracted it. So that is only a difference of 1% between the two masks. And this led the authors of the paper to conclude no significant difference between the effectiveness of N95 respirators and medical masks in preventing the laboratory confirmed influenza amongst participants routinely exposed to respiratory illness in the workplace. So pretty surprising results. And personally, two big things stood out to me when reading through this study. So first, I'm pretty surprised by how high those numbers are if people actually got infected with the flu. It's 8.2% and 7.2%, and these are trained medical professionals. But my assumption is that these high numbers are probably a result of just them being exposed to this virus on almost a daily basis. And my guess is that this is probably more of a result of them not following other best practices during their shifts, such as washing their hands for 20 seconds, removing their mask properly, and not touching their face, and probably less of a result of them actually inhaling the virus and getting infected that way. Many viruses can actually live on the surface of different materials, anywhere from a few hours up to several days, depending on the virus and depending on the surface material. So according to one study that I found, both influenza A and influenza B viruses survive 24 to 48 hours on hard, non-porous surfaces such as stainless steel and plastic, but survive for less than eight to 12 hours on cloth, paper, and tissues. Measurable quantities of influenza A virus were transferred from stainless steel surfaces to hands for 24 hours and from tissues to hands for up to 15 minutes. Viruses survived on hands for up to five minutes after transfer from environmental surfaces. And I also found a different observational study from the University of South Wales that found that people unconsciously touched their faces an average of 23 times per hour. So with that 8.2% and 7.2% healthcare workers that did get infected, my assumption would be that most likely this is how they got infected and they probably weren't even wearing a mask at the time. It's very possible that they touched surfaces that had the virus on it, got it on their hands, that virus could then live for up to five minutes on their hands, and then they touched their faces unconsciously 
and they may have contracted the viruses that way. My second big takeaway from this is that it appears that just having anything covering your mouth and your nose and that's filtering out those larger particles and providing that barrier protection against droplets is almost just as effective as a respirator specifically designed to filter out particles the size of viruses. And the so-called leakage that you get from air seeping in around your surgical mask may not be as big of a deal as many people make it out to be. So my assumption after reading this is that if you wear just about any kind of cover on your face, it can have a pretty big impact. And in fact, on the CDC's website, they say that if hospitals run out of N95 respirators and surgical masks, they can use improvised masks. In setting where face masks are not available, healthcare professionals might use homemade masks, example bandana or a scarf, for cases of patients as a last resort. So even with a bandana, you're probably still getting that barrier protection against droplets, including large respiratory particles that the CDC says that you also get wearing a surgical mask. And even with a bandana, you're still benefiting from not being able to touch your face nearly as much, probably a heck of a lot less than the 23 times per hour that the one study found. So what does this all mean for you? Should you go out right now and buy an N95 respirator or a surgical mask? Well, in my non-professional opinion, I'd say no. After reading the study, it seems like having that 0.3 micron filter capability is not all that impactful on whether or not you get infected or not. It appears that the surgical masks are just as effective. And according to the CDC, the biggest benefit to these for the wearer is just that barrier protection against droplets. And it seems like you could probably achieve that barrier protection with some other materials such as scarves, bandanas, maybe even a t-shirt. And on another note, we are experiencing an extreme shortage of respirators and surgical masks right now. And our country's inventory should really be going to our medical professionals right now who are being exposed to this on a daily basis, rather than a consumer who may possibly be exposed to it for 15 minutes when they run into a grocery store. I'll have links to all the studies that I referenced in this video down below. And if you wanna see my video breaking down the recently leaked government report that says that we may be in this situation, for 18 months or longer, click right here to check that out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. Stay safe and I'll see you guys over here in the next video.